captivating scenery of Bye Bye City, right? Hi guys, we are now here again at Lintaon Peak in Bye Bye City Leyde for another lesson which will focus on how to use colored oil pastels for drawing landscapes. Hey guys, I'm now going to draw a landscape using my colored oil pastel with me and along with it I brought a folding table and a tripod okay a tripod easel is essential when you draw landscape so that you can have the freedom to move your hands about and view the landscape at the same time so this is the convenience of using a tripod easel okay the first step that you will do when you're going to draw a landscape is try to determine its local color so the local color that we have here is mostly green and blue so I'll be using light blue for my outline so later uh, the, the lines of the blue won't be visible as I place the other layers of color on my illustration board okay this is my illustration board okay so you may also use uh, paper like Oslo or rough cartolina for your uh, oil pastel drawing but since I, I, I would like to come up with a more stronger and more um, easily transportable piece of medium I used uh, illustration board artist illustration board so let's first sketch using the perspective lines no so just like in the previous module in charcoal drawing uh, I first established uh, the horizon as well as the position of the nearby hills so I have to be very careful on how to create the the illusion of of distance with my with my sketch no? so uh, the most important thing to do when you make your sketch is you have to be very sure and accurate about your establishing lines okay so I've now indicated the areas of the horizon um, the hills nearby and uh, the bushes and trees that I would like to place in my foreground okay so what we usually do in using pastels oil pastels for sketching is that we start first with our background so the base color the local color that we have here is blue so I'm going to first introduce uh, the color of our sky so I'm here introducing I'm using here sky blue so later on we will be using um, other warm colors to make uh, the color of our background and atmosphere quite a little bit uh, a little bit gray okay so you have to remember that um, muted colors or cooler colors tend to make the background look as if it is at a certain distance as if it looks far away from the viewer if you use muted colors when you say muted colors these are mostly colors with the gray tone so when you also use your oil pastels for for landscapes you have to be very careful on your use of yellow because yellow is a very powerful color and it tends to overwhelm the eyes and yellow sometimes creates problems when it comes to atmospheric perspective or creating the illusion of distance so next is we'll use a much darker blue color for the mountain range
Okay, I'm trying to test uh, my color. Trying to analyze which areas need this particular shade to create the illusion of distance. Okay, oil pastels are actually pigments suspended in wax. No? So, if you compare an oil pastel to a crayon, a crayon has less wax and uh, more binder compared to an oil pastel. Okay, an oil pastel has more oil. That's why it's a little bit softer compared to your or to the crayons. So the crayons that we use in school are called hard crayons. Oil pastels are usually considered as soft crayons. So what's nice about oil pastels is that they are very spreadable and uh, they're blendable and they can easily be diluted using turpentine. So since our lesson is on dry media, oil pastels as a dry media, um, we will not be using turpentine as a solvent for any of our exercises. But um, trying to use oil pastel as a dry media um, in order to express colors on our subject matter. So we have already established our, our, our mountain. So now let's go to our coastal area. Uh, when we try to color the, the water of the ocean, it's not totally of the same color. There is a, actually a mixture of dark blues and light blues uh, on the surface of the water. Okay, so uh, after finishing the after finishing our background, so let's move forward towards the foreground, and I'll be using a lighter shade of green to color part of the coastline as well as some parts of uh, the mountain area. Okay, so. When we try to use oil pastels, usually uh, most artists uh, use colors from light to dark. Okay, so um, the problem with with oil pastel is that uh, you can actually scrape the colors if you commit mistakes, but it's not easy to completely remove colors that you have erroneously applied on your surface. No? So, every now and then, you have to consider the different tonal values of your landscape. So, which part uh, have uh, the light tones and the dark tones? So, here I'm using a, a 12 color set of uh, oil pastels and if you noticed I haven't used yellow yet no so I'll save the yellow for last uh, I'm going to use yellow for uh, the accent for the warm areas of my uh, oil pastel drawing okay okay so you, you try you try to reserve yellow for the last part of your drawing session wherein you're going to use it for the accents. So right now I'm determining the areas in the landscape which has uh, the light green or yellow green color. And if you notice uh, the mountains in the latest on central cordilleras have uh, a few tinge of green but i'm not trying to use too much bright green there just a hint of 
the vegetation because I'll be reducing the illusion of distance if I do so. So instead, I'll be adding a little bit of violet or purple for the shadow areas of the mountain range. And uh, you have to be very careful when using purple because too much purple will diminish the illusion of distance if the background becomes too dark. Okay, so instead, um, I use the violet to indicate the shadow areas in between the ridges of the mountain range. And I'm also applying purple in the foreground. So if you mix purple and uh, yellow green, you will come up with a darker kind of green. Okay, so you know, if you notice here in my, in my approach, um, the colors that I apply are created in patches. Okay, I don't, I don't tend to linger in one area because if you try to stay in one area, the result will become overworked. So we have to avoid uh, overworking our pastel drawings. When you say overworked, um, it means that the drawing is not fresh looking or as if the artists have spent too much time adjusting some parts of the artwork. So that's what we refer to as overworked. So the, a good artwork should look effortless, should show the stroke made by the artist, as well as show the viewer the technique that the artist have used. So I am using right now more of uh, zigzags and cross hatches and so I'll try to inter introduce a few grays for the clouds to complete the complement of the foreground and the background. Okay, so since we would like the foreground to look a little bit warmer and closer to us, I'll be introducing brown for the ridges of the hill as well as for the dark areas of the vegetation. So the texture of the coconut trees is now included. So if you notice, it's largely what we call as impressions. So if you combine green and brown, we can come up with a more earthy type of green. So you can include the details of the branches of the trees in the foreground. So just like any other sketches, don't expect that a, an oil pastel colored sketch is very detailed. Expect that it's mostly 
impressions of color because you are required to take a photo reference of your subject matter before you go home. So to further darken the intensity, you can include uh, a little bit of hints of red in the foreground or use black to further intensify some of the figures in the landscape. So it's not bad to use black when you do your sketch but just don't overdo the use of black because black has the tendency to absorb so much of the colors around it and and sometimes it makes your work look dirty so that's all for today thank you for joining me in this demonstration on how to make drawings using colored oil pastels. See you next time!